Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a real-time fire simulation using Niagara particles and 3D gas dynamics in a real engine file. You can see the simulation playing in the editor right now. I've used it to make a campfire, but you can use it for what you need. Before starting, be aware that this is a real-time simulation, so it looks good, but it's performance heavy. You might use it for a main scene, a cinematic, or to set on fire something that is really in the center of the screen. Using multiple simulations like this at once is possible, but should be done really carefully and optimizing them as much as possible. Now let's make some fire. First of all, let's create a new Niagara system by right-clicking the content browser and selecting Niagara. We add the font and particles emitter and click finish. I'm going to rename it to ns underscore file and open it. This emitter will be the guide for our 3D gas simulation. In fact, its particles will be spawned but won't be actually drawn on the screen. In emitter properties, we need to set the emitter sim target to GPU compute sim. Next, let's increase the spawn rate value to 300. The emitter won't reach that value since the particles will die pretty soon. In fact, in the particle spawn group, we leave the lifetime mode to random but we reduce the lifetime to 0.1. Note we could also set the mode to direct set since mean and max values are the same, but having it in the range is useful for a quicker experimentation with asymmetric values. Scrolling to the shape properties, let's set the primitive to ring disk and the radius to 20. The distribution is better to be set on uniform, so we are sure there are always particles at the bottom. We have a pretty high velocity values right now, so let's set them to minimum of 70 and a maximum of 90. That's because we are going to disable the gravity force, so the particles will fly upwards freely, but not too much since the lifetime is low and it will make them disappear before going too high. For now, the effect seems far from what we are aiming for, but remember that this emitter is just the guide for the gas simulation. In the particle update group, let's add the collision module. And if you want a lighter effect, you can skip this part. But for the sake of realism, I'm going to keep it on. I'm going to set the GPU collision type to analytical planes because it gave me a good result and it's the cheapest collision type in terms of performance. Now we can finally add the module that will pass data from this emitter to the fluid gas emitter that we'll create next. The module is called Fluids Gas Source. After adding it, we can see that it has three parameters that have a great influence on our final fire simulation. For now, we can leave them to their default values. It's time to create the second emitter now, so right-click in the canvas and click Add Emitter. Select Parent Emitter and search for Re3D Gas Master Emitter. You will see the simulation starting right away but it's better to pause it for now to not slow down the engine too much. To make a campfire, a big render area is not needed, so I'm going to shrink it down to 100, 100 and 160. As you can see, the simulation is now constrained in a much smaller area, and this is also good for performance. In fact, you always want to optimize the simulation area as much as you can, so it won't clip the simulation itself, but also avoiding to make it too large and waste computing power. Let's lower the resolution to 160 and the pressure solve iterations to 4. The first setting acts on the bigger axis of our simulation area, in our case the Z, since it has a dimension of 160, and tells the engine how detailed the simulation will look. The second setting represents how many steps the engine will perform to calculate the particle pressure in the simulation. Of course higher steps will make it more accurate, but slower. Always be careful when playing with these numbers, as you may crash the editor, so it's wise to save off in your work. Ok, now we can link the two emitters together, so in the emitter spawn group let's open the particle source and set the particle source type to emitter. In the emitter name we have to enter the name of the font and emitter we created before and click it in the drop down. We can now go to the sourcing stage and turn off the grid 3D gas sphere source. This makes visible the link between the two emitters we just made. Let's turn off also the compute curl stage to make the effect lighter but still realistic. Let's go back to the font and emitter and change the parameters in the fluids gas source we saw earlier. These values are quite sensitive, 
meaning that a small change can lead to quite dramatic results. So I suggest you to experiment gradually with them. Playing with these values, you will quickly realize that density and radius seems to do almost the same thing, but they are not. You can think of the density like the initial density of the gas before the simulation starts. So putting a high number here will result in a starting situation of high pressure, like if a lot of gas was condensed in a very small sphere. When the simulation starts, the sphere disappears, leaving the gas free. The radius value, instead, indicates the dimension of the spheres. That's why the two parameters seem to do the same thing, because their combination defines how much gas is contained in every sphere. So here's what happens. The fountain emitter is linked to the gas emitter, defining how many spheres will be spawned. Remember that we set its spawn rate to 300 before, and their location. Then the gas emitter simulates the fluid dynamics. In fact, we can turn off the sprite renderer of the fountain emitter and the effect will still be simulated. Ok, back to the fluid's gas source. To replicate the effect we saw at the beginning of this video, we have to set the density to 0.5 and the radius to 6. You can notice that we still have only smoke, there's no fire. That's where the temperature parameter comes to play. If you change this now, it won't affect the simulation, and that's why we have to tell the gas emitter to take it into consideration. So let's go back to the emitter summary of the gas emitter, scroll down to the attributes and check the temperature box. As we do so, we'll see this fierce fire burning our retinas. So let's reduce its intensity, going back to the fluid gas source of the fountain emitter and set the temperature to 0.04. The situation is better, but the fire is still too strong. To contain it, we have to edit the dissipation parameters in the emitter summary of the gas emitter. Scroll down to the attribute section and set the dissipation rate density to 3 and the dissipation rate temperature to 4. These two parameters tell the emitter how fast the density and the temperature should decay over time. Now it's time to save the system and bring it into the scene. Note that I kept the effect quite dramatic, but remember that if you have collision enabled, like me now, objects can collide with the particles, dumping the fire down. That's exactly what happens in my final campfire, that has some wood log smashes on top of the meter. Here you can also see a quite realistic flickering ambient light. We are not going to cover how to do it now, but I will do in a future video. That's all guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful somehow. If you did, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to take your support to the next level, be sure to check out my Patreon page in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep on creating and cheers!